So in this video, what we're going to learn how to do is to program the new AHT temperature and humidity sensor. This sensor is a replacement for our DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. The AHT1 seems to be a little more stable. It also is smaller and it is also of lower cost than the DHT1. So that is part of why we're, we're going to use this one. We still have all the instruction and materials built around the DHT as we have a number of these. And so you're more than welcome to use them. And you can also do a comparison between the two of them if you wanted to. So I'm going to set our DHT one aside and we're going to use this AHT. The difference with the AHT versus the DHT sensor is the AHT is the, I, is the I2C sensor, which means we have to plug in the AHT into the I2C port and the I2C port is right below the green terminal block which is giving power to our actuators. Now one of the things you're going to need will be an I2C hub because now instead of just one thing plugged into our I2C port we're going to need to have the air and humidity sensor, we're going to need to have a screen and we're also going to need to have a light me meter or a light measure or light sensor installed onto the I2C. So we need extra ports. So we just plug it in and then you can just plug that cable that's plugged into your I2C directly into your I2C hub and then you can plug anything that is an I2C sensor directly into the hub. So you can kind of think of the hub as like an extension of the I2C port. So now instead of one I2C port, all of a sudden I've got three additional ones because I've just connected this I2C to this I2C. So now they're all an I2C port, so I've got four. We also have I2C ports that have six. And so it kind of depends on when you got your kit, whether you have four or six. We're going to definitely use three of the slots. Okay. So that's how we wire it up. Now let's talk about programming. So if you open up the start.hex file, which is a link provided in the materials, you'll see that we have this Grove block. And if it's not there, again, how you get it is you're going to go to the extensions and you will simply type the word Grove and hit search. And what we're going to do is just this Grove Seed Studio package. And in this package has everything we will need to control a variety of Grove sensors. The one we're going to worry about at the end is this AHT20. And notice it's Grove temperature and humidity sensor. Read the temperature in Celsius, read it in Fahrenheit, and read the humidity. So it's actually a little bit easier to program than our DHT1. So let's get started with that. So like everything else, we need to create a variable because we need to store our air temperature data. So I'm going to make a variable and I'm going to call it air temp. Okay. And I'm also going to make another variable and I'm going to call it humidity. Okay. And every time I make a variable, I also get these two blocks, the set block and the change block. And I'm going to drag my set humidity block over into my workspace and I am going to drag my variable set humidity again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change that to air temperature. Okay, So now these two blocks are going to allow me to assign the reading from set humidity and air to the sensor reading that I'm going to get on my AHT. Now what we like to do is we like to create functions that we can put these blocks into so I can reuse them over and over again. So let's go ahead and make a function. I'm going to call this function get air data. Okay. So now I've got my function get air data. 
I can just drag my two set blocks right into my get air data block. And notice right now my humidity and air temperature is set to zero. So if I wanted to know what my readings would be, is that these would be zero. So I need to go get some data. So I go back to my Grove block, scroll all the way down, and let's do temperature first. So I'm going to put my Grove, read the temperature in Fahrenheit, and I am going to also go, oops, go back down to my Grove block. And I am going to scroll all the way down, and I'm also going to drag over the humidity. Okay. So now I've got my humidity and air temperature. No need for pauses between them. It will instantly read these guys. I don't have to initial it or initialize it because it is in the I2C port. And that is really all we have to do to be able to get my air data. Now, to be able to see it, Right, and to use it in a program, I need to make sure that I put the call get air data function in the forever block. Because now when my program runs, it's going to run the stuff in, on start, and right now I don't have anything. Right, if I had an LED strip or an OLED screen, that stuff would get initialized there. I've got my function get air data, and it's going to get called in my forever loop. So now I should be able to get my air data. Now, if we wanted to make sure that we're getting the data, all right, what I can also do is I can go to my basic block and I can show my data on a screen and I can put it right on my micro bit screen if I wanted to. So I can say T equals. I can then show a number on my screen. And the number I want to show is my variable. Let's say I start with air temperature because I'm showing T first. Now I can copy my show string or duplicate it. And now instead of T, I'm going to say H equals. I am going to duplicate my show number. Right? And I'm going to change that to humidity. Okay? So this will scroll across my micro bit. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to download it to my micro bit. So let's plug it in. Okay. All right, I'm going to change the name of my program and I'm going to call it Get Air Data. Okay, there's my micro bit popping up on the screen. Okay, I am going to download my file and it's going to download it to my downloads folder. Okay, so here is my downloads folder. Okay, let's do a refresh so I can see my most recent files. There it is, my get air data. All right, now what I'm going to do is I am simply going to drag that folder or that file from my get air data to my micro bit. All right. So now I'm going to download it. All right, now it looks like it is finished downloading. See, so I've got my information now scrolling across my screen, right? But I don't have my micro bit in my shield. So let's put my micro bit in the shield. Notice I've already got the power plugged in. You should always have this power plugged in because that allows the, all the sensors to get the right amount of power. So now if I plug this in, the program is already running on my micro bit. Okay. Now we've got to let it kind of run through it. And right now it says my temperature is 80.41 in the room. The humidity equals 50.41. Zero, 01. All right, so I'm at 80, 80 temperature and 50% humidity in the space. Right. And that's really all that we need to be able to get my temperature and humidity data streaming across my micro bit. And what we're going to do shortly is we're going to add a screen that we're also going to attach to our I2C hub, and that will allow us to continually to see it. Otherwise, I have to hope that I catch my data scrolling across the micro bit screen at the right time, which as we add more and more sensors, this is going to become a little cumbersome or difficult to use.